Although this footage was taken back in February, I really wanted to share with you all my Fairmont high tea experience due to how amazing it was. I actually made a reservation well in advance and had no idea what was in store for me. As a result, I was very confused when she led us to the back of the restaurant. I was even more lost when she showed us this bookshelf, but that all got answered in an instant. Honestly, the introduction to the tea room was one of the main highlights of this experience. I actually reserved this for Valentine's Day, but I completely forgot that Lunar New Year was still happening. Once we settled down, they gave us a mini pamphlet detailing all the upcoming pastries. Using the pamphlet, we also got to choose our own preferred tea. We got two buttery scones each, some sweet pastries on top, and some savory ones on the bottom. The tea flavor was pretty light, so I added some sugar and milk. Overall, this was such a relaxing experience, and I highly recommend it. Despite the rainy weather, I'm meeting up with a friend to try a new cafe together. I've actually never been to this part in Vancouver, so it was really fun walking towards the cafe. One detour that I took is going to this plant store with a cat in it. Although I'm not really into gardening, I had a really cozy time walking around the store. Not gonna lie, I primarily entered the store due to the cat. I actually arrived earlier than expected, so I walked around this park across the cafe. It's moments like these where I miss when the sun is out. Somehow, this walk has a nostalgic feel to it. There were a number of items on sale. I had a hard time choosing, but I ended up getting a croissant and an iced coffee with ice cream in it. My friend also ordered something very similar. This cafe was a bit far out, but I really enjoyed the food and drink. It was also really nice catching up with a friend. Now that the weather is warmer, I've been going on more walks and I recently discovered this cherry blossom street. The cloudy weather and the camera does not do it justice, but these cherry blossoms were really vibrant. I'm so glad that I got to discover this street as a lot of cherry blossom petals are already falling off. Looking back at this footage, I realized that you can't fully appreciate nature unless you see it in person. Who needs Japan when you live in the Metro Vancouver area? Even Steveston had a cherry blossom festival a week ago. I've never seen this before, but there was also a mini neighborhood library. The books were a bit random, but it was an interesting concept. Better, on the way back home, I spotted another cherry blossom street. I remember being so caught up with final exams last year that I didn't get to truly appreciate these cherry blossoms. I'm so glad that I get to look at them now. Speaking of cherry, I went to Cherry's food house for dinner. This was actually my first time trying it, and although the food looks tasty, it was a little bit bland. I 
I really like the corn cheese and fried chicken though. My mom recently came back from a trip to Taiwan and I asked her to buy these glue tape rollers for me. She bought the 8mm one plus the 6mm one which is meant for notebooks and photo albums. She also got some refills. These are pretty hard to get in Canada, so I haven't used them in a long time. The last time that I used this was in high school, and I would always use this over regular glue. For the longest time, I refused to use any stickers for my sticker collection. However, I've been recently trying to adopt a new mindset, which is to use nice things while you can, so I've been using my stickers to journal. It still feels weird to take away from my sticker collection, but it's for a good purpose. Some of these stickers are no longer tacky, so I'm using my tape glue to stick them onto my journal. You can always layer on for extra strength. I decided to journal two pages a day, so I chose some of my melody stickers. It looks just like my mini sew figurine. The other day, I journaled about delayed gratification, and today, I'm journaling about my minimum productivity baseline. My go-to from day one are these Zebra Sarasa gel pens. However, I'm noticing more that they leave a lot of excess ink. Let me know in the comments below if you have any pen recommendations. I always highlight my journal topics with a colored marker. It makes my writing look more colorful and vibrant. I bought some items during the Sephora Spring Sale, with one of them being the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I actually already have this concealer at home, but I'm running out. I really like to use this to contour my nose, my eyebrows, and conceal any blemishes. There's a slight change in packaging compared to the previous one. Next, I also bought the Kaja Beauty Bento and Chocolate Dahlia. When watching Jessica Vu videos, I noticed that she uses this product pretty frequently, so I wanted to try it out. It comes with a shimmer shade and two brown shades. The Beauty Bento is smaller than I thought, but I like how compact it is. Each of them also comes with a plastic protective film. I'm really excited to use the two brown shades to contour my eyes, draw aegyo cells, and to create soft eyeliner looks. The shimmer shade doesn't show up well on camera, but it's really pigmented. Lastly, I bought another refill for my go-to lip balm. 
As seen in my previous Sephora haul, I bought a bunch of makeup items already, so I don't need to buy much anymore. Although it's pretty pricey, I have never found such a moisturizing formula, which keeps me hooked. It's also not too scented and leaves a natural light glow on my lips. Similar to the Tarte packaging, the packaging on this lip balm also changed from before with the text being bolder. This is how much I have left from my previous one. A little update on my Laneige lip balm, I'm probably not going to get it again. It looks really nice and has a smooth looking finish, but it's weak in terms of moisturizing my lips. At least I tried. I also got some free samples from Rare Beauty, but I won't swatch it since it's single use and I actually want to try using it in my upcoming makeup looks. In the evening, I visited this manga cafe. I've never been here before and have been meaning to try it out. The interior is really aesthetic and they have so many menu items to choose from. We chose a seat in the corner of the cafe and then decided to look at the manga options. I thought all the manga would be in English, but majority of them were in Japanese. Initially, I thought of picking up a Doraemon book, but since I finished watching Hunter x Hunter a few weeks ago, I decided to choose the first chapter. For food, we got a okonomiyaki, glass omurice, and some chicken karage. We ordered brown sugar bubble tea, and despite it looking like regular milk tea, it was really flavorful and tasty. The same can be said for the food. We spent the rest of our evening reading mangas and eating food together. I hope you enjoyed taking along on my days exploring Metro Vancouver. Make sure to check out my other videos while you're in my corner on YouTube. See you next time, bye!